posted. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about different shield sizes, different shapes, and, uh, and then we're going to go a lot into differences between punches and straps. So it's going to be very much half the class is going to be punch versus strap type things. All right. Um, if you guys, if some of you guys don't know me, I'm Dasrath. I'm from Canada, uh, Western Winds, <laughs> and I'm Raven. I I travel pretty much everywhere, but right now I'm Stormhaven. Uh, I'm Miller Town. I'm from Northern hey. Lights. I travel a lot of places everywhere. Pretty much the same thing. Sweet. We have a special guest, Miller. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Just hang. All right. Um, so. We uh, tried to get a few different shields. I was trying to get uh, some different sizes. I wanted to get oval and stuff like that. But yeah, like I said, we're going to be talking a lot about it. And uh, for those that want to fight, we're also going to strap you in or give you a punch shield and give you some tips on what you can do. Um, so if you are interested later on, we're going to start that. But first, we're we'll not getting this one back. <laughs> <laughs> you need to give me specific permission for that one. I know he'll never see it again. <laughs> Um, so, first thing we want to talk about uh, is going to be shield sizes. We're going to keep the sh sizes much shorter because really, it's really obvious. Um, but for some people that are newer, they might not understand exactly what different shield sizes can do. Is that one even smaller? Mondu? Yeah, your Mondu is smaller. All right. So we have a small shield, just ignore the Madu part of it please, I would love to have a small shield. And then well, we have Raven here with right uh, up there in front of you, you can use it. A what? You said the yeah. smaller one. Yeah. Yeah. Use small a small thing. shield. You don't have to excuse yourself. Uh, it's better. pretty, pretty close. Okay. I thought, I thought this one was <clears> fairly bigger. Okay. Sweet. Small shield and uh, probably 28, max 29 medium. inch, 30, okay. 30 inch max, max medium. So perfect. We're uh, comparing the differences. So obviously, for those that fought enough, this is bigger than yours. <laughs> yeah, sweet. Good observation. Um, so we're going size-wise. There is pros and cons to the large shield and the small shield. Of course, uh, we're all used to the big shields uh, and how much they can block. So obviously, that's the big, big pro. If, uh, he wants me to swing at him, it looks like it. No, I was just showing your good feet. Oh, okay, yeah, so anywhere he doesn't move it, unless I'm really digging going down, I can't hit anything except his legs right now. All right, so you see that, or if I have this, he wants to hit, oh yeah, I can't do anything. I can punch it out, but again, we're talking about just shield size right now. He can get everything. So that's the super obvious con and pro of this. Now I'm gonna go the opposite way, is more offensive. A small shield will allow me to do and throw shots that a big shield won't. So if I want to throw just a regular shot on the side here, that's under my own head, I can throw it. But if he wants to throw that same shot, see where his arm is? Big difference. I can pop that arm. So all the, the big advantage of a smaller shield, of course, is being able to give you more openings of where you can shoot. Right, he has to reach for, if he wants to go for this shoulder, he's got to reach, he's got to reach, he's got to move that shield the other way. Where this thing I can, right here I have a lot of room, I can still hit down here. I can still hit here. Okay, we don't, we're not going to touch much on sizes. We just want to go through some basics if you want to talk to us about it after. Um, is there anything you wanted to add to that, Raven? No, that pretty much covered everything I had. Cool. Part two is shape. All right. So next we have a shape. We don't have examples of that. Oh, we've got the module. Oh, well, we do have a module. <laughs> That's true. But um, I want to. He's got an example of it. That's a shield. Oh, sweet. Can we borrow your shield? <clears throat> awesome. Thank you. I'm going to go through a few different shapes, not what we physically see right now. But with the new, well, the newest rule change of V8, which was two years ago, we are allowing shields bigger than two feet, which you'll see more and more, especially if you're. Amp guard career cross games with Bell. You'll see Bell fighters come in with tear, uh, teardrop shields, not teardrop shields, kite shields that are over two feet. All right, so you'll see that difference because it's squared off and down to the side. So if you're picturing it, you'll see squares. So we're just going to compare it to a square shield for now. Then we'll have ovals. Pretend this is here, I guess. Yeah. I was supposed to have an oval for this class. It's coming, but I'm just not here with it yet. 
Um, and then we have teardrop. Teardrop, egg shape. Egg shape. Egg shape. We'll see some towers out there as well. Yeah, that was the last one on our list, tower. Um, all of these have different advantages. Uh, tower. Oh, and dome shields, they're making oh, a comeback. Yeah. Dome shields, um, well in some areas they never left, but uh, they're definitely starting to make a comeback more and more up here, it seems like it. Yeah. Um, What's the dome? This is a dome, it's a dome punch, but... Yeah. With a dome shield it's nice because it gives you more shoulder protection, so I really have to throw deep in order to get past it. That shot actually hit my arm. <laughs> so you see how deep he has to throw. Um, and then you have different shapes, size shields. I guess we're going to go, this is much of a square shield. Oh, there we go. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll use my right arm. All right. So different, different corners of shields can block different sections. And this is, uh, even though I can't give you too many examples of this because we don't see it, it's not common. Um, we can show you if it was squared off and you would see it. You can see corner corner shields that are like this, let's say with the corner. We typically would like to wrap, because we're so used to round shields, we can wrap this shot. You can't do it with a square shield at the top. It's there to block that. Now if you see the, uh, the sizes that are down, just like the kite shields, versus a tower shield. So you have, like um, Miller said, there's a tower shield. Tower shields, you won't be able to get hits. But if you have the down that comes in the corner, you might not be able to get this wrap, but because of the size, you gotta realize what openings are, and you might be able to get this shot because it angles up. So again, when you're looking at shields, look at the, uh, the shape of it. Size, shape, and then our last one now. And where the handle is, like yeah. oh, on, yeah. on my straps, I like to do it really low. So I have a whole lot of the shoulder covered, Whereas if you dig deep for my hips, from turn, around, yeah. Yeah, turn around, yeah. See, see that? And that's rested. He doesn't have to table it. I like to have it right here. So if you dig deep and you come down for the hip scoop, I am really susceptible for it and I have to be aware of that. Whereas if you have a closer to a middle strap, it covers both your shoulder and your hip. But if you've got a long torso, you need to move it around more than most people do. Dog Boy is all about the center strap where he has to move the board a little bit more, but I mean, he can change it between his right hand and his left hand because he's a mutant like that. <laughs> yeah. um, so before we go on to the next part, is there any questions about those two simple parts? That's what we were just scooping over. And then we're gonna go into uh, what we can do with punch and straps. Friendly reminder, questions are good. Don't be afraid yeah, to ask absolutely. questions. absolutely. Even if you think it's a hard question or you just think it's a dumb question, it doesn't matter. We will have answers for you. The logic behind a high punch? High punch? Or a low punch? Or wherever you put it? Off center? Punch, I've always put center. Yeah, I don't you know will never... Because I've seen two or three that were high. They, I've they, seen a they put the handle high? Mm -hmm. I've seen a, a tower shield with actually a punch oh, that's yes, really okay. high. That's right. If it's a bigger shield and it's going down, they're not too worried about having it having it down here getting shots moving it the problem with having a, a punch handle at a different angle is it makes the other side of the shield very weak and manipulative all right so if i had this up here you can move this all day the center part of the, the reason to call it a center boss center part of the shield is you have the most control of an already shield that doesn't have as much control as a strap so you want to make sure that you have as much control as possible with it does that make sense okay you, have you seen round shields with it at top yes and I've seen round and I've seen uh, teardrops as well. But teardrops, so teardrops you're, makes you're more sense because they're top. keeping it again, yeah. The smaller. Yeah, on yeah, it makes shield, sense with teardrops. If you really want to go yeah, high or low handle on a round shield like that, just make a longer handle in the middle so that you have the center option. Because you're you're not gonna like fighting like like if you build it in low, like like his center one on there. If you just build that in low, you're gonna hate it and you're gonna regret it. So just build the handle long and you can go low yeah. or go high as you want. Yeah, again, the, the higher one on the teardrop, you'll see it, like you said, it's probably because of balance. You got more weight at the top, it's going to be higher up. It's wherever the balance of the shield is best controlled. And on a teardrop, that points to protect your legs anyways. Arthon from the CK is like notoriously dirty with that teardrop shield. Good, I'm glad someone brought up Arthon. Because uh, we had talked about mentioning his name for the teardrops. Because we don't see teardrops here, but this guy is a monster with the teardrop shield. 30 years. Yeah. 30 years, like he's just been, he's finally slowing down. Teardrop strap, too. 
Yeah, his teardrop is strapped. Yeah. It's strapped. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's strapped. Uh, he's lanky, though, so he makes it look... He makes it look easy. Yeah. He, well, yeah, he moves and he's got to move a bit more. Yeah. He's super flashy, too, when he wants to be. Yeah, he also yeah, he prefers is. a 38-inch sword. You guys yeah, didn't know that. Um, cool. All right, so the ne next part we're going to talk about is punch and strap. So I'll get Raven to grab a strap. Okay. So, when held, really, most people will not notice a difference. All right, unless, of course, it's the size difference. But when held, it's probably very similar. All right. Um, when you're seeing someone use a punch, some people will hold it out. All right, so you will notice that. But if they're trying to kind of keep that hidden, they'll hold it in just like a strap. So it's kind of hard to tell right off the bat, but you will know as soon as they start moving whether it's a punch or a strap. So when you do that, so he's using a strap. Even if I poke a little bit, he's not going to move this. Now, if he starts going around at me, see what I mean? You can tell right away, and he keeps seeing full defense. You can tell right away that I have a punch because it's being manipulated more. Um, when we talk about that, I want to address one of the things that I've noticed. Is, is yours rounded? Yes, it is, but it's much thicker, so it has just a little bit more. So wrist strength really comes into play here. It's a round handle to where if somebody pokes the outside, you've got to have a really good solid wrist strength, or you've got to danger your thumb and put it up here to hold it to where if I stab to the outside, it's not rotating as much, because I will manipulate your board in 8.0, that's a thing. We'll talk, Whereas, we'll talk about that in a bit for sure. We I've will got, get into manipulating shields. I've got an oblong handle to where if you stab here, I've got more grip and it's not going to slide out of the way as easily. That's why I like putting tennis grip even on my round one. But yeah, it's not as good as a, a good oblong handle. Um, so yeah, your first thing you got to do when you're fighting someone is definitely figure out, other than the obvious, what we've talked about, uh, size and shape, which you can see from a mile away. You can't see whether it's a punch or a strap from a mile away. So figure it out because this changes everything when you're going into fight. You do not approach a punch fighter the same way you approach a, sh a strap fighter and that is because a strap fighter will have a lot more static defense okay so he will by his best ability keep that shield to the maximum amount of defense he can have which is typically where he's used to having it and how I teach people if you're ever learning strap find that position and hold your shirt or hold something, or freaking duct tape it to yourself. I don't really care, because if you're learning to fight strap, you don't want that thing moving. Okay, anyway, that's here, not here or there. So you will know right away that, that he is. And now, you know he's not gonna move this as much unless he strikes. But, because he can't move it as much as a punch, he has to move this board a little bit more to get, he's gotta move his body a little bit more. All right, so what was I leading to this? I was leading, Getting out of it. right, okay. So as a punch fighter, if I'm fighting punch against strap, I need to get off way different angles for him to open himself up. And here's where the advantage of punch comes up. If I go off to a different angle to attack him and I'm using a strap, I don't have as much Ability to move it for my defense. Unless you're Sean. <laughs> Even then, you see his ability now with uh, punch? Mm -hmm. He moves that thing like a madman. Um, so, a shot normally with a strap, if you're throwing here, this opens up. And I'm pretending to use a strap right now. All right? This is going to be there. But you'll see when I'm using this, and I'm throwing this shot, and this is the advantage to the punch shield. All right? I can throw it, I can punch it out even. Big thing is angles. Angles of defense. I don't even have to put it here because he can even do that with his strap. It's a bit smaller of a strap. If no, if you went for mine, you can still do that, right? So what I can do is I could punch it out and still attack. Now I have all this movement here, and I can still throw that shot. And it's easy for him to drop the punch shield once I have swung because I have to move this down. Now I'm in a bad situation because he can do a dark side up for the arm, or he can just drop this down a little bit and pick me off because now I have to move around my board in order to bring my guard back up. 
So that's the two major changes to this. Now, there's a disadvantage to the punch. Of course, we kind of hinted at it. Is I have to, it's much easier for me to move this. Now, we're not going to do the manipulating right now. He's going to, do you want to uh, do, you do things? Or just, you can do things. Okay, you want to grab a punch? Now, because they're used to moving their shield and it's not right up against their body and not moving it, you can manipulate the shield without manipulating the shield itself. And we will talk about manipulating the shield after physically. Right now, we're doing it with feints and takes. And you need to notice this, and this is why you need to notice if it's uh, punch or strap, all right? Because as soon as it's a punch, your feints will work probably 50% 50, 50 better, all right? So if I'm going for one of my typical shots, is down here, he will go down this way. I didn't even have to move it, all right? If he had his strap, there was no way he'd be moving that. So if I'm gonna go down, I can pop back up, all right? If I go down this way, I can also pop back up. As a punch fighter, you wanna be moving your shield, but you gotta realize that feints are gonna be, feints and fakes are gonna be super effective against you compared to a strap shield. So you can throw feints from basically anything. And really you wanna be reading the person on how he fights. If you throw this and he doesn't believe it, don't don't keep going that. Start looking to throw here to see what he wants to believe, all right? Um, double feints, all right? Anything like that. Um, so yeah, as a punch fighter, you will realize, and that's why I don't suggest punches to new fighters at all, you will realize how easy you move this thing. And if you go to a new fighter with a punch shield, and I go up here, they often go, Whoop. oh look, they can't see anything. <laughs> like you, you, you see me go to town on people that block their own vision. And that's a problem you gotta realize when you have a punch shield, you may block your vision way more than if you have a strap. Because you will be moving this thing, whether you want to or not. Yeah, <laughs> this thing, yeah, it's made to move, your body's made to move that way. So, in that note, you have to control the fight better with a punch shield. Because if you're sitting there on defense, and uh, if you're a more defensive fighter, which is great, even though we had this comment once, when Raven and I were fighting a couple years back, they're like, these two guys fight very similarly. And I just laughed at him, I'm like, no. And I think he just even nodded, like, no, we don't. No. Um, because I'm an offensive fighter, I like to fight with punch, he likes to fight with strap. So you'll notice when he's a strap shield, he's way more defensive. So he will wait for me to open most of the time or try to create a small opening. But that's the problem with punch. If he's using punch, you'll see me probably get him more than he gets me. And it might be vice versa with, uh, with that, with the strap. So the advantage of a strap. Small punch. So now that he knows that I'm using a punch shield, he's going to throw way more feints and he can go from being defensive to being way more offensive. And that's the thing you notice because if you're fighting a punch shield, the punch shield wants to be offensive, they want to do feints, they want to get around because they want you to open up without digging too deep. What he typically wants to do, if you were to fight another strap shield, is be defensive, pop a leg, just get someone to kind of dig in. Our medic is here, needs some help. <laughs> and, uh, so if you were to if you were to fight me now that I have a punch, he can realize, he can change his mindset. And this is the whole thing, you have to change mindset based on the person that you're fighting and based on the type of equipment they have. So if I had a strap, he would be more defensive, we'll probably play a defense game, but all of a sudden this changes everything he might be really defensive and try to get me to move the shield. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good thing we yeah, have I lost all traction. <laughs> Do we have questions on that so far? No, no questions on that. Okay, cool. Um, what are the notes that we have? So I'll just recap. Strap is way more defensive, but oh. you have less less abilities to attack you have less certain you, you have less mm, I don't know if it's about mobility of your attacking yeah your attacking arm yeah so you have less mobility of your attacking arm so you can't open up certain angles that you want to fight so punch shield has an advantage there but there is way more defense on this so if you play a defense game 
then you might be able to pull off more advantage than if you're a punch shield fighter. Another thing is, is straps, unless they are custom made for you, if you get hit, like in the arm, it takes a second to get that off. Whereas if you have a punch, you can throw it down, switch hands, and continue going. You will see this. Yeah, question, didn't you care? I, I guess I'm just curious because I'm a defensive fighter and I use a punch. Yes, yes. And I'll, I'll go through um, defensive abilities with punch soon. We're also going to go through manipulating shields. Okay. But yeah, I'll definitely, I'm keeping you in mind. Okay, yeah, and I'm just going to point out on what he said there. Try that again. People will not always be nice to you. So if I do get him in the arm, and he goes through it again, and I hit that shield when he's dropping and he's dead. All right, if that takes him that long to do that, where if he gets my arm, right, it's way easier for me to drop that. That was a bad example. I dropped it a little bit early, but that's okay. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. um, another thing, especially in tournaments, some of these cheeky bastards love to grab a flail. A strap sucks against a flail because it is stuck on your shoulder, so the flail will come around and wrap. Whereas if you have a punch shield, you stick it out, if they wrap it around, nine times out of ten, if you have a max medium punch shield, it's going to hit your hand, which is hand on weapon. Hand on equipment. Hand on equipment. Count. Doesn't count. So I can stick this out. I've got good solid defense against a flail. What's the, what I like to do against flails is keep it in, make them want to do it. Whack. <laughs> mm -hmm. Those are advantages. Yeah, get them to reach out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are you allowed to press with your shield? Press as in shield manipulating? Push the person. No, absolutely no. not. You can push the equipment, not the person. We, we will definitely go through that very That's soon. That's what I wanted the distinction of. Yeah, yeah. We will definitely go that We're very gonna soon. We're going to cover that. Okay. First, uh, the question with Danica with um, talking about a defensive fire using a punch shield. You can absolutely change your style to be a defensive fighter with a punch shield. The thing is, as soon as you need to go on offense, you have to switch your mind a little bit. The reason you can be more defensive with a punch shield is because you can cut angles. This shield, this, like, he cannot hit me if I just keep staying back. I have cut all the angles. It's a cone of defense. If anyone's seen my other classes, we call it a cone of defense. There's, a, there's like a cone that goes down this way. So this is really small. You can see, can see everything. Now he can't see anything. He can't get to me if I keep backing up. So yes, these can be used very much to defend. But if, you, if someone ever does that, especially being righty on righty, um, he's using whatever. I'll use my one. Doesn't matter. Let's pretend this is a strap. Someone just sticks it out to me like that. Just stick it out to me. Right. Very easy to come in and manipulate that shield. As soon as it's out more, you have less power in your arm to hold that shield. So that'll lead us into shield manipulation. Uh, I have something to add on the defensive punch shield fighting. Sure, absolutely. If that's cool. Absolutely. Uh, also, uh, the big thing about a punch shield is that, like, with a strap, it's really, you have a lot of defense here that you can't move as much. So, a punch is very alluring to your opponent. So, in a sense, I could kind of trap him, making him think that something is open or not. He's talking about baits. So, so like, if I take and bait Dazareth, and maybe instead of holding it out with the with the prime defense on my on my left shoulder, if I bring it down a little bit, he sees that it's tasty, and when he goes and swings, if I can time it right, sorry about that. No, no, it's fine. I take that arm, and I can totally switch my stance, like Dazareth was talking about, totally switch my mindset, and then move into the offense. I'll give you guys another example because he was going uh, he was going with this side with it. I feel like this is an example of what he was talking about. If I pop down this way and see how I leave all this open, everyone wants to high cross this oh, way. Oh, look at that shoulder! Right, with a punch shield you can pop this. Now, we did it a little bit earlier, but this is what we call a bait. We'll do it at a different angle. And yes, it's, you can throw baits a lot better with punch shields. And even if you just say, so take a stance to make that tasty. Boom, right there, see that? Now, like, like, turn Dazareth. Let's take a look at Dazareth really quick. What's open on him? Right side. Right side. What's the easiest to connect to for me right now? Right side. Right shoulder, right hip. Yep. You know what your favorite one is. Okay, cool. So, if he keeps that in mind in his defense, and if he could sell that to me with a bait, and I think, oh, wow, that shoulder. 
I'm open. See, now, and now it takes me too much time to kind of really just notice that I like, fell into a trap. Not to mention, when he threw his shield up here, do it again, when he went to throw it, notice his hips are designed to where if Miller decides to go under, it's going to miss everything because his shield is here, his hip is back to where if anything, he's going to hit the arm. He's still got a decent defense. So just keep that, keep that in mind when you're fighting defensively, is that you can you can kind of sell to your opponent a bit. I can even kind of take my arm out a bit, you know, and if he goes swings for that arm, I can bring this shield over. See, so, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like how you kind of bait them as well if you're going to plan defensively. But as soon as you get that opening, or say if you catch that arm or get them to do something, you need to switch, like Daz was saying, back into that offensive mode. And just yeah. remember, not every bait is going to work for everyone. True. Everybody is different. True. Um, one of the things that Robin likes to teach is everybody has a move list. I don't know if any of you guys play video games, but hmm. think of it like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, or anything like that. Every person has a set of moves that they always use. I mean, you're, you're going to walk away from them, and a year later they're going to have a new move. Remember that, and just remember what they throw, what they like to throw, what's their go-to. A lot of newer fighters love the high cross. It is the slowest shot in all of Amp Guard, but for some reason, everybody loves throwing it when they first start. The way he explained it to me is like, all fighters are like floppy disks. And when I go up against you, I put your floppy disk in the computer and load you up. Hmm. And like, I have all your floppy disks in my brain. So whenever I go up to fight somebody, I'm like, oh, I know, I know his favorite shots. I know his 90% shots. I'm going to put his floppy disk in the computer, load it up, and now I know his information. So it's like, you got to keep floppy disks on people, especially if they're destroying it. That goes very much into tournament style. Um, if you're definitely fighting one-on-one -on -one a lot. What I want to, actually, I didn't point out before we go into shield manipulation, is um, as someone that much prefers to fight in groups, I really like punch for this reason. Is this, because this is movable, and I like to break between people, and we'll use Miller and Raven on this one. And this, brings in exactly what Miller was talking about with baits, and you guys have probably seen uh, um, Robin do it too. Robin actually to look away, like for like action, and really this know, he, know, he knows he's coming, he freaking loves it, he looks away, and then you're like, shit, yeah, and he's like, bam, bam, right, even sometimes he doesn't even look back at you, because he's just, he's seeing you in your peripheral, but anyway, the reason, another reason I do like punches is the ability to put it on my back. So if they're fighting me, I might go like this, just pop here for him once. And just to get his sword out of the way, I pop back. You can go up or down with a punch. Punch is really nice for spins and fancy tricks. Very versatile with your movement. What I noticed with the strap is you can only go one direction. And if you're going one direction and people like to chop down, they might pop you still. Or if they like, like, um, they were to throw a spin and then, like, he goes that one direction, he turns around, throws, throws, his, throws his board behind his back, I block it, he kind of goes to evade, I can still run, like, I can run faster forward than he's going to be yeah. able to. And, I'm just be able to and again, even though spins are fun one-on-one, -on -one, most of the time they're not super effective, but when you're fighting multiple people, and this is why I mentioned it with multiple people, and again, assuming that he's going to swing upwards because I took away his bottom swing, if I pop this way after I attack him, he's got it there. But if I had done it this way, would I have to do it with the strap and do the same thing? Well, maybe that kind of still worked. But if he attacked faster, he probably would have got me. Um, so this gives you more options on fighting multiple people. You can, again, change your blocks. But you got to realize your disadvantages. There are pros to cons to every weapon combination against what opponents are playing. And um, so. Just to recap, you can be a lot more defensive with the strap shield. Wait for your openings, be patient. And you can, if your way of controlling fights is to wait for an opening most of the time. You get people to open up and you can and squish them. You force them to do the wrong thing. Right. Patience is a key with the strap shield if you're a defensive fighter. Because nine times out of 10, I can sit and I can wait for you. You will get frustrated because the fight's taking too long. You want the fight over with, especially in a tournament. It's all about time. It's all about <coughs> pressure. You have to kill me. I don't have to kill you. Eventually, you're going to come after me. You're going to get irritated or upset. 
frustrated, whatever it is, and you're going to make a mistake and I'm going to eat you for it. Patience. There's no time limit on it. I mean, don't let it take 30 minutes, but take your time, do a shot that you are comfortable with. Because if you do anything out of anger, frustration, you're going to screw up and I'm going to pick it off. So he is talking about a player going to the point where he makes his own mistake or is to control the fight with a punch shield. You're trying to make the person make a mistake. So it's a little bit different. You're more on the offensive to try to make them a mistake. Give them a bait. Give them a feint. Something different so they make the mistake. You made them make the mistake instead of them just making a mistake. So what that's would you it. say is the difference in your uh, defensive stance and your uh, aggressive stance with a punch shield versus a strap? Uh, yeah, that is a very good question. And we're going to go with um, a strap start. Defensive stance with a strap is typically which which uh, which sword forward, uh, which right offensive if you're strap. And if you go defensive stance. Oh well, this is my defensive stance. Oh, okay. And offensive stance, but, but offensive. Oh, okay, that, that depends on how he attacks, of course. I'm well, exact let's go. opposite. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's exactly. go. Exactly. I do everything from people. So do you typically, usually, like, basically. lean on, like, let's say your resting foot in your defense stance, or are you on your forward foot in your offense? I am backwards to almost every single fighter. Um, this is my offense and defensive because I'm comfortable here. I am limited on how far my range is because if I take a step, I'm not gaining a whole lot. I gain, like, three to six inches on top. Whereas most people, this is offensive because if I step forward, I gained a foot and a half, three feet, so depending it, on how. In so that sense, it's basically a bit more 60 on his back foot and 40 on his front foot. So he can take the time to take the opportunity and be defensive and know when to spring out when he has to. Yeah. Well, with Daz, it's a bit more even because he's very more versatile. He could spring when he has to. He could play a defense game. Would you say it'd be more prominent to start with having more even footwork? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Footwork is yeah. the key to all fighting. You always, you want to, you want to, you want to aim to be even. He is talking about how he plans to attack, not his current static defense. So if you're talking about static defense, you have more if you're shield foot forward, okay. because your weak spot is typically over here. If this doesn't move, this is the only spot here or legs that they can hit you, right? And if I keep my hip back. He, he can't dig, he can't even dig for that. Like, he, he has to dig pretty deep. Yeah, I have to go pretty low. I, I have to use, I'm also not used to the forward, but yeah. Um, so if I'm shield for forward, this is back, and then I can keep this here. For him to go on my weak side, it's very easy for me to block. So static defense this way. I think Raven was talking about stepping forward, so he goes into this position prior to attacking, because there is good defense, and he can get a bigger step. Whereas, um, I wanted to show an example he was like this and he was thinking that if he steps this way you, you lose you're not stepping with your sword right so if but if he were to go like this and take a half step like that he can gain it also so that's why you see most people will have a more offensive this way it brings out their because their offense goes up it brings their defense down because they can get hit more here but it is faster to take a step with your front forward than it is to take a full step with your back one. Exactly. Right, that takes a lot more time. Would you say that's the same with the strap? I am using a strap right I now. I mean, I'm sorry, a punch. With a punch? No. It is if you treat it like a strap. And I do a lot because my first eight years of fighting, I fought strap. So if you treat it like a strap and you just move it as you need to, use the advantages you need to, then yes. Um, I am not like most typical punch fighters. A lot of them will keep it out a bit more. But your defensive position, your maximized defense position with the with the punch, is to stick out your punch. But yes, it's a, typically the same feet because you still want to keep your your weak side out, but you want to stick this out because you want unless of course you're fighting a, a lefty, then things change. Because now his sword's over on this side, so I'm I'm going to do it like this because he's not going to get. On, this is even... stupid on a lefty. They're not, they're not going to throw this nine yeah. times out of ten. They're so bread and butter. I, I, might throw, I might have more defense, and it has more to do with... Yeah, no, it's actually the same thing. Yeah. You're going to still use this foot out this way, and you're going to punch your shield out, but instead of over here, it's going to be over here. 
and you can fade out for them to high cross because they love to do that. Right. You can also take that bit, you can take that left leg and take a big step and get that hip like even more if he has to. So you can so go ahead, Raven, throw and then dash block. Oh, now okay. take that oh, big step. Boom. Way. Exactly. Yeah, See that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, if I could add something on uh, posture or whatever we were talking about, uh, I was gonna say like there are three different stances in general in Aft Guard that kind of just kind of like blend together. And the main one is basically this. And this is like your core stance. So wherever you go from a different make sure you turn So wherever you go from a different stance with this, this is like your like you you assess your opponent with this stance. But wherever you go from a different stance with this, you want to come back to this core stance. And then there's this stance, which is like like fight or flight, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna kill. And then there's this stance, which is more of a range stance, and basically the first one I showed you, with a little bit more spread out legs, okay? And with a strap shield, reason, oh, that's so tight. <laughs> oh, that's tight. Yeah. When it's, with a strap shield, what you wanna do is when you take that, that, that core stance, um, what it's gonna do is it's gonna prevent you more from moving your shield to block a lower shot. So if Daz throws a low shot, I wanna do it this way. So low, see. low hip? Yeah, like let's say here. Short side hip. Oh. Or like say like you throw for my leg, okay? Like say instead of moving down to block that leg and expose my shoulder, like with my strap shield to get hit in the shoulder, like say he's gonna bait or something. Instead, at that point, I bend my knees. So the whole shield comes with me. Does that make sense? So. I'll still have defense here and to my hip as I move. So instead of going down with it to block, or down like with my strap to block, I just bend my knees and all stays there defensively. So he's saying when you're too too short or like too too small of a stance, that bending down is a lot harder. Wider stance, you can you can do it. Um, and with a punch shield. Like whether you're sword foot forward or board foot forward, that bit more of a range stance is gonna kind of like let you assess your opponent a bit more and help you a bit. Instead of like both both are gonna be bad like this. You're either gonna do one or two things. You're gonna fight. You're gonna really throw offensively, or you're gonna die because this is gonna be how you're gonna get hit the most. Like you, you're gonna be off balance. You're not gonna be able to move like as well forward. Like walking forward is gonna be harder. But you want to twist it, so not only that, with punch and strap, but if you see, there's far more hit location on me now, if I stand square. But if I turn it to the side, whether I am like strap or punch shield, it really turns off all like the hit location. And that, in that sense, you have to kind of fight one part of my area. Because swinging to my shield is going to be what I want you to do. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? Cool. All right, now, I know we've said this twice already. Well, let's go into shield manipulation. We'll get into uh, Christian's sure manipulation. About that? <laughs> All right. So something apparently, I don't fight with you guys enough, but apparently you don't see it very often here is shield manipulation. And you'll see it a lot more. Again, it's way more susceptible on a punch shield. So I'll let Raven do some of the techniques on me. Say a punch shield is out a little bit, because most people will have it out. There you go. All right. Or he can even use a shield. Or he can even... What I've also seen, it worked really well on me the first time I saw it, someone would use the edge of this shield to punch out here. Edge of the shield. Oh, high cross. In the yeah, he uses that. Like, brings it back. Because I'm trying to... Oh, I'm I got you. I got to push you. through crazy. the guard. You're trying to I'm trying to compensate now. And he takes another step and hits That's me in the crazy. back. That's crazy. And I've also seen... And if people like to stick their shield out a little bit more, and I'll show it on Raven here, just pretend you're sticking it out a bit. All right, you can also punch right here. So it punches it into the sword, and then pop again. Side, so like show that from this angle. All right, because typically it's done with a strap. I've seen it with a strap, but you punch here, and then you can pop the side. Here. So those are way more useful against someone with a punch shield, uh, against someone with a punch shield. All right, my favorite one though, and he did it on me, but this is a lot easier to pull off with a punch shield I find is the hook. All right, this is way easier because you can keep your distance. You're, you're, uh, you're still using your cone of defense. You can cap it and then pop here. Or cap it and you give him a little bit of second to compensate. As soon as he goes back, 
then you pop them in the shoulder because people, as soon as you move their shield, freak out, they panic. They panic and they overcompensate. So it's the same thing why you double. So if I, if I faint down, and well, typically if you, if he falls for the faint and he moves the shield down and I go up again, now he's going to overcompensate and now it's way more open. Or in a sense, if he's used to that faint or you've been burning him with that faint all weekend and he's got it like burned in his mind that Gaz is going to throw low and then go high, those double fakes really work really well because then like after that, like after he throws that and then kind of lets you know that it's not going to come there and go there, then your mind's twisted. Then at that point, you kind of don't know what Gaz is going to to throw. Like, you don't know if he's going to go high. You don't know if he's going to go low. So. So another thing is board placement. I really enjoy on a punch fighter, typically, typically, is if they keep their guard close, especially if they put it under their chin or under their nose or anything like that, I like to mess with them. I will, from my guard, smack it down, or if they're one of those really cocky people that want to hold it down and bait that underneath their chin, I will be that guy. I will smack that shield right into your chin or into your nose and make you guys go, okay, now I'm scared of this fighter. It's like, because he's, he's not afraid to be the bad guy. Especially against Raven. It's like, I will tell you flat out when you fight me. You got your board here? It's like, don't do that. It's like, if I go for my hip shot and I miss, it's like, I'm hitting your board. Your board's going straight into your throat and you're not going to be well, able to breathe. Or it could be potentially a broken jump. Yeah. Oh. Now, Sometimes you don't really have that choice because then this was a strap and not a punch. <coughs> Dome shields tend to do that a lot. <laughs> so you, you have get to used stick to it. the front out a little bit yeah. and go behind it. But you'll notice that uh, Dalos himself, he keeps it there and he's used to getting it hit into his face. It just doesn't bother him anymore. So if you do it on him or do it on anyone that has a dome shield that's used to it, they'll just be like, yeah, whatever. As soon as you do it, they'll just kind of take advantage of it. And they'll be like, ah, oh, whatever, hit me in the head. Um, but yeah. If you're using a dome shield, you'll recognize that to be probably more of a disadvantage on that part of it anyway. Um, so, shield manipulation again, we'll go back to it. Because we got the what's acceptable and what isn't. Specifically in the rules, all right, if I go for a shield and if I punch it, go like that, it moves the shield, it's fine. If I bash and move his body, that is not okay. Whereas if he has his cone out, if I come in here, I have not moved his body. I have crushed his guard, but I have not moved his person. This is acceptable. This is not. So yeah, you'll see that on punch fires. If you want to manipulate it, you want to get to close game, and you are a close game fighter as a, as a sword and board fighter, then uh, feel free. You can, you're like, I don't like that punch. You're being defensive. You don't like it. Just push it right up. All right. Of course, a lot of people will back up, so we'll see. We'll see, really see how that plays out when you try it. But again, you do not push the person. You push can, the equipment. Yeah. But you can push the equipment pretty much in any way you need to, as long as you use your equipment to do it. Question. Yeah. Uh, is there any tips that you could maybe give us that, like, how, how to not, like, because I, I know, like, it's, it can really expose you, or it can really leave you open. Does that make sense? Is there anything that Absolutely. you like do to tighten it up or make sure that like, especially with like keys and movement, like a gun through there's like, you know what I mean? Or yeah. like, is there anything you got going on Absolutely. with that? Or? And this is what I was talking about earlier with the Kona defense. This is why I like the one shield manipulation with a punch. As soon as you punch it to hook it, I already have my cone here. He has to go low to do it. But he has to think about that typically, unless he's already ready or used to me doing it. But if I do that to hook it, I'm typically coming down this way anyway, because my plan is to come down and hit him here. Gotcha. So if he happens to go down, my sword will catch it. He'll stop my shot, right? But then we're just kind of at a stalemate. We might, we'll probably just both back up at that point because he doesn't want to be freaking out. My shot stopped. Chances are I'm just going to back up. Uh, you could probably follow up if you're at that point in confusion and you're expecting the confusion, then maybe you can pop up because he is a bit more out of position than you are. You can, He's going to overcompensate to go back possibly and you can go back and shoot here. Especially if you step in. Do you think over-exaggeration is kind of a bit of a key as well to like not leaving yourself open or extended or anything like that? Over -exaggeration like try not to over-exaggerate uh, exaggerate the... Uh, the pin or the, the move or anything like no, that? No, I think that you need to know where you're putting your board because okay. you need to understand your corner defense for what, um, lane, uh, yeah, what lane you're blocking. Okay. 
uh, if you over exaggerate, there's a lot of people with very, very fast reflexes. They'll, they'll strike you right before you even, because okay. right, if I go to hook him and I go like, uh, he'll, he'll strike me right in the chest right before I do it. I wanted so I to measure it. up on that subject. I just, you know, yeah. So for those that see it, the difference between just going for a large hook, right? Or if I punch where right here and grab it, he has to strike after, right? So if I punch here, this is where he's gonna wanna swing because I've already stuck out. He's not gonna wanna swing or back up. All right, now I'm defended, pop out, and pop him in here. And he's moved his board and he's confused. And we're, like, like <laughs> Dazzle said, where if he were to really bring back on that, a lot of amp players have a lot of great timing and speed to where if I were to have this punch here and I would over exaggerate that game or to throw this board off, I would go. Like that, that's really leaving me open. If I were to come out, you know, Captain America style, it's, not a, it's really, you know, it's just not gonna process. Yeah. You gotta suffice. really plan where you're gonna put that, that board. You can't just oh, like try to go for a huge hook. You're not trying to get, and typically that hook won't work very well against other straps, especially a good strap fighter that holds it really tight. If I went to hook Raven, most of the time this wouldn't work. All right, it's too tight. All right, um, I love to do it against other punch shields. As a punch shield fighter against another punch shield fighter, that is an amazing move to use. It looks so cool too, like yeah. it looked from the sideline, you're like, oh! But because of the defense of a strap, you gotta get in a little bit closer than you really wanna be comfortable doing. And he has a lot more power of holding that board towards him. That I, like, I would probably have to exaggerate my strike and then he would take advantage of that. What resources? I'm sorry, do you have a question? I was gonna say, um, the farther you exaggerate, the more you'll open it. Like, like what you're saying about your telegraphing, where, <clears throat> where your shots are going. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, any, that's, that's, that's the same thing I tell newbies. Stop swinging this way. You're telling me, like, yeah. everything's so, too obvious. Every half second you add is an extra half second. They also have to react. Yeah. So the tighter and more compact the shot is, sure, you won't have the, the wind up of a larger shot. But like we teach this in wrestling all the time. Because we have people who walk, he, they will walk in to throw someone like this. It's like, yes, we know you're going to throw someone. So. Mm -hmm. Something I like too before we get to the question is uh, this whole shield and leather shield. The way I, the way I showed it, how I do it, I, I try to pull off right here and hook it. If they get used to that, this is the same move I, I just showed you guys too. No, just go back here, right here. Um, if I'm gonna do that and he's he's not letting me do it, again you can do that and go over here. All right, this is another way because all of a sudden he's he's thinking that he's gonna have to hold it this way. So as soon as he thinks that. Then you can be stopping me from moving right, to my board side. So again, that's basically the same movement I just used, except instead of hooking it, I just punched it and held it. Wrap around. Again, be careful. You do not push people. You are just stopping their practice. Them. This on your friends first, and let them know this is what you're doing. Sorry, before your question, Twit had one. Oh, uh, I was just curious if uh, you guys use any resources to train down those angles outside of trial and error. Uh, I like watching Bell videos, the advanced sword and board from SKBCs, watching ditches from Keep, Clan, watching the way people fight, their body mechanics. Everybody's different. Everybody can move differently. The shots that they throw, it, it's YouTube is your biggest friend right now. It's like people don't give enough credit to newbies. You learn a lot from fighting someone that has no basics because they are flailing and you have to understand why are they flailing, why can they shoot shots that way. So when you approach a newbie, caution. Yeah. <laughs> like, she said that yeah approach it like you're fighting a good sword. fighter because you have to realize what, like they're doing things that not normally and they're going to open up. So you, you can <coughs> use that to analyze how they're fighting and say, okay, so body movement works that way, body movement works this way. Yeah, Sometimes they throw a really crazy shot, and you're like, how the hell did that happen? You know what? Never never underestimate a complete newbie. You can learn a lot from them. They can learn a lot from you. Yeah, basically, Musashi said the scariest person with a sword is a man who does not know how to wield it. And then I had a question in the back. Uh, so you were discussing proactive fighting versus reactive fighting earlier. Yes. You were talking about opening stuff up. Correct. Uh, so I just want to clarify that that's what you're discussing. Proactive versus reactive. Yes, proactive, yeah. yeah. As a punch fighter, you need to be proactive. And yes, you can be very reactive. As a, a reactive fighter, as a punch fighter, is not, you're not going to get as, uh, as far. You need to really plan your fight more. And you have more tools to plan. 
Whereas you have more defense with a strap and you can be a more reactive fighter because you have more defense. Right. Yes. So yes, those are two very good words that should include in my classes. Range Thank counter you. fighters take a whole lot longer than you aggressive bats. The second question, well, the actual question was, uh, when I was down fighting in the CK, there was a lot of shield manipulation and, yes. and stuff like that. And where people would go for that hook that you were talking about, where you're hooking from the inside of the shield, yeah. they would actually use that as, well, you already put yourself in that opening, and then they would shoot out. So the person who was doing the manipulation yeah. got manipulated. Yeah, it's where because, he, because because if you're not doing it properly and people are so used to it, pull over. Correct. Well, yeah. like if he throws that hook, yeah, it, it opens it, it, him up that. to different shots. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna try that. <laughs> 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 all the time. Oh, dude. So is that where you're discussing too. between the pin versus the right? Yeah, it's all when you're shield hooking, you are opening up more of yourself. Again, you have to plan it. You got to know who you're fighting and if that's gonna work. Again, like I said. A lot of the people in the CK use strap shields. So that shield hooking gets you in really close, right? Because it's two strap shields. At this point, yeah, like if I, if I come in, though, they can come in here. Yeah, it's, it creates a mess. It's all about the grind at that point. Yeah. Um, whereas if you go to New Mexico, you're going to get that completely different game. They're not used to shield manipulating there because it's wheel territory and they're all used to this whole money shot over here. So they're using their range more. So if you can close in on them, they're not as comfortable. So again, yeah, you can learn about fighting people based on the territory they're in. So if you guys do travel, realize these type of fighters in this type of group fight like this. But yes, they're all close game in CK and well, torch territory typically. Right. Rogues too. No. Uh, we get rogues too. We got rogues. rogues too. Yeah, they're close game they fighters. Come up, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They come up from the wetlands, Houston area, so they're only like three or four hours out. Yeah. But Uzar has been uh, creeping on us a lot lately because he's been winning tournaments and stuff. So yeah, the rogues tend to follow their own boys. Oh, uh, and we had a rogue king a couple of rains ago. That there you go. Really and he's a close, yeah. and, and he fights close really well. Um, Ozar's kind of nuts, man. Like I don't think anybody's really figured him out too much. Lately. Okay, yeah. That's why I was thinking rogues have it a little bit different, but they they're used to the close game. So yeah, you yeah. try to pull it off on them as a new as if you're just trying it out. They fight work out too, so they're not afraid to make that level of contact. So they'll like grind you real. Yeah, quick. Texas is a whole different world. It'll open your eyes on on how they fight. Not just Texas. Go to like New Mexico, just the South in general. You can travel. Try to travel everywhere. Go to Iron Mountains too. You'll see another totally different side in Iron Mountains if you can breathe up there. Uh, um, do we have questions? Uh, any more questions? Does anyone have the time? Wait one. 236. It's not bad. All right. Um, the next part we're going to do, and that's really dependent on if you guys want to, is we're going to split groups that want to fight and pin you as uh, punch versus strap fighters and see what things we can do. So Raven will take the strap fighters on one side, I'll take the punch fighters on the other side and give you guys some tips. Um, if we have enough people that want to do this, what I want to do is actually give you what you're not used to. Of course, most of you are probably used to strap, so that might happen anyway. But um, if we have punch fighters, I want to put you on strap. If we have strap fighters, I want to put you on punch. So you can learn what the other side is doing. We have people that want to do this. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Okay, we got three. All right, so the people that want to do this, come forward. Hey, Paul. All right. Yes, I can use it on you. Kick the sword, man. And also, I have um, here my punch boss. I think I talked about it a bit Paul. What's up? Are you out of time? Just. The rest is not important. You okay. Don't need to report it. Okay.